Today's reading is Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 47. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone throwing demons out in your name, and we tried to stop him because he wasn't following us. Jesus replied, Don't stop him. No one who does powerful acts in my name can, turn, can quickly turn around and curse me. Whoever isn't against us is for us. I assure you that whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will certainly be rewarded. As for whoever causes the little ones to believe in me, who believe in me to trip and fall into sin, it would be better for them to have a huge stone hung around their necks and be thrown into the lake. If your hand causes you to fall into sin, chop it off. It's better for you to enter into life crippled than go away with two hands into the fire of hell, which can't be put out. If your foot causes you to fall into sin, chop it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to be thrown into hell with two feet. If your eye causes you to fall into sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter God's kingdom with one eye than to be thrown into hell with two. The word of the Lord. You probably all know already by now that hellfire and brimstone is not exactly my strong suit. <laughs> so I should begin by saying this actually was the scripture selection listed and offered by the lectionary for this week. And yes, I went ahead and selected it and decided to run with it. And it wasn't the area I would normally choose, but... I thought I had a message to deliver. In fact, on Monday, I knew the message that I needed to deliver. As the week went on, I knew that I wasn't ready. I knew that the world had changed, my attitude had changed, my needs had changed, and I imagine that some of ours have too. So I spent a little more time with this scripture passage, alternating between what can I do and what have I done? <laughs> and lo and behold, God spoke. Not directly to me, but through others around me. And God offered me a way forward where I could see no way. I am grateful for the breadth of this selection as, although it speaks and can be read as a coherent whole, it really does have two parts. One part being that if you were to lead any of these children into sin, it would be better for you to wear a brimstone around your neck and never do it again than be cast into hell for causing others to fall. But there's that prelude piece before it, this part where the disciples come to Jesus saying, what's going on? There's this guy over there, and he's doing a lot of stuff in your name, and he's not one of us. Make him stop. We've heard that before, right? And before we all just nod our heads, parents, and go, yes, I have raised children, we've heard that before, and it wasn't necessarily our kids where we heard that, was it? We have heard this, they're doing something, but they're not part of our group, so why? Make them stop. Make them quit. They can't do that. 
And this is one of those brilliant moments in my mind where Jesus answered, who are you to stop them if they can do good works in my name? How can anyone who can draw upon the power of God and do good in my name quickly turn around and curse it? If they are not against us, then essentially they are with us. So don't worry about it if somebody else is casting out demons in my name. Don't worry about it if somebody else is doing the work of the gospel in my name. Is it better that you have a say and you have control and that it's you who are doing it? Or is it better that God's work and will are being done? If they're not against us, then they're with us. And that's okay. Hard lesson to stomach some days, though, isn't it? Amen. A hard lesson to take to heart when some days we want it to be our work and our wisdom and our mission instead of God's work and God's wisdom and God's mission. But I found strength this week in the reminder that we are not alone in our calling. Quite frankly, I find it freeing to hear Jesus say this because it's a reminder that we don't do this ourselves. We don't have to do this ourselves. In fact, shy of somehow one of us discovering that we are the second incarnation of the Christ, I doubt we could do it ourselves. Heaven knows I sure couldn't, and if you haven't figured that out by now, you need to attend church more often. <laughs> we accomplish the work that we do because we do it together. And if we are not against one another, but we are united in Christ, then we are accomplishing this as one. So in the midst of the storm that overtook our national psyche this week that has surely divided many of us, that would surely divide the sanctuary if we took the time to discuss it and speak, I had a moment of light and of love and compassion. I had received a phone call last week from our friends and our partners in the Puget Soundsters who we know as, uh, as a, uh, an organization, a choir that rehearses here in our building. And then they very generously give back of their time and their gifts for that gift of the space and the time by putting on a concert. We're, we're looking forward to one in December where they will share with us from their Christmas music. And they get the benefit of having a, a warm-up concert, if you will. We get the benefit of having a private concert for us and using it as an opportunity to raise goods or to raise funds for mission and outreach in the world. It's a wonderful symbiosis, a wonderful working together. No, they're not First Christian Church, but they don't have to be with us to be accomplishing good work, do they? But this week I got a call from a woman named Jackie who was a member of the choir and she had one actually last week I got the first call and she wanted to talk and she said that they had received word about the disaster in our basement and the the bad news that had befallen us and uh, they all had certainly understood and shared some of their own stories of times when they had faced similar problems in their homes in their churches and they knew how much of a struggle it can be to walk through a tear down and a rebuild after something like a flood in the basement. So I was tickled pink to get a call from a representative of one of our building partners just to let us know they had heard of our plight and they cared. And if it had stopped there, I would have been happy. It would have been enough just to be able to share with you that I had received this call. Our partners know that we are hurting and they care about us. Can we really ask for more? But she had said we'd also have discussed this. We've talked as a choir and we'd like to help you out. So can you tell me, uh, are you insured? Thankfully, yes. I can share with you that we are insured. Amen. Well, as the conversation continued on, they said, well, I will get back to you, but we will talk again, but we would like to help you out a little bit with this. And I thanked them and said, this is a very gracious offer and we would never ask for it. And of course, it would never be required of any of our partners to step in on this. This, this is why we're insured. But I received a call this week, again from Jackie, and she said, are you going to be around tomorrow? Can I drop by after lunch? And I said, sure. And I promptly forgot about it. 
So the next day rolls around. We go through a meeting with a, a potential contractor that morning. I'm neck deep in the inner workings of rebuilding the church. I'm just finishing my lunch, and I hear the door open, and all of a sudden that memory comes back. Oh, yes, I'm, I have visitors. And sure enough, Jackie was there, and she brought another member, uh, Jeannie. It is Jeannie, right? Yes, not Janine, it's Jeannie. Thank you. Jackie and Jeannie showed up, and uh, they said, you know, we've been talking, we have a gift to offer you, and they handed me a small little envelope. And, uh, and I opened it, and in it was a handwritten note expressing their concern and their condolences for what we had gone through, and also was a little something more. Jeremy, do you have that photo that you can cue up? In that note was a check for $1,000 to cover the cost of our deductible from our partners, from our building tenants, our friends at the Puget Soundsters. Where there is no way, God will make a way. I am personally grateful for them because it saved my sermon. <laughs> but I am collectively grateful for them because it reminded me of something that I was forgetting this last week. And that is that we do the good work when we are able to pull it together and do it together. And no, it's not because we all meet and share under this roof at the same time and have the same goals. It's because we do our work in other places. I loved the conversation that I was able to have with both Jackie and Jeannie as we sat and talked for a while. And they talked about their experiences in their churches. And I got to thinking of the ways that the good news is being shared within the walls and beyond them in so many churches in this community and how much we share in common in Jesus name and I thought gosh they may not be like us they may not be here with us but if they aren't against us maybe they can be with us and in a moment like this our friends at the Puget Sounders showed us what it means to be with one another this was an important moment for me and I'm going to figure out how we can celebrate that and make it an important moment for us, too. I'm going to invite you all. I will bring the card I don't have this week, but I'll invite you all in the future. I'm going to bring a card. I'd like us to sign it and to send it back to them to let them know we are grateful for their support. But I would also like to let them know on a more personal note that I am grateful for the reminder that this is about what we do together, even when we don't realize that we are together. That if we're not against one another, we can be for one another. And when we, if we are not against each other, we can be for you. That's what the Puget Soundsters told us this last week. We can be for you in this time. We can be with you in this time. We can share with you, we can help you, we can support you. And we're happy to be able to do it in this moment. And I thought, as I continued to work my way out of the sermon, which there was no way, this is a reminder that in some ways we do this as well. That we have been doing this in many ways, and one of my goals this year has been to remind us of the ways that we do this, because it is easy to forget that we can be with and for one another. That we have ways that we tell our neighbors and our friends that we are with you. And one of them is our giving. Jeremy, will you go ahead and throw up that, that second picture? Some of you all may have noticed it already. That our pantry for the food line, the doors changed colors. And uh, they're not done yet. The paint that we have added to the doors on the pantry is chalkboard paint. Which means that after it has finished setting up and drying, you can treat it just like a blackboard. You can take chalk, you can write on it, you can draw on it, you can do anything with it, and then erase it off when it's done. And I went ahead and snuck this in, and because I'm telling it in the sermon, it's probably a little manipulative, but I thought it was better to ask forgiveness than seek permission on this one. <laughs> but I thought, how wonderful would it be if by making this blackboard paint, putting this front on the door, we can now every week update how much we gave, how much was delivered this last week. What did we give to the food line when, they, when it was turned in? Because we get back a receipt 
that tells us how many pounds of goods. They estimate its value, but they tell us how many pounds. And I thought, how neat would it be if on one side of the door it told us this last week, thanks to your generosity, the food line received X number of pounds of food. Thank you for helping one another. And then on the other side it said, and your running total for the year is... Because I got to tell you all, until I really started taking this seriously and reading those updates in our newsletter, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe the year end totals of the amount of food that this congregation has given. You all have shown a generosity that surprises even me. And I thought I had done my homework before I interviewed with your search committee. But you. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is not the first time the joke has been on me, and it surely will not be the last, but it's good when it's a pleasant surprise. So I think of this, and if we can embrace that message of not against us, but with each other, not against us, but with you, the ways that we can support and build up the kingdom. This is God's call, and it doesn't matter we're not the only ones sending food to the food pantry. Thank God we're not. We surely could not meet the needs in our neighborhood and our community beyond if it were. Thank God we are not the only ones who are working through special offerings like we'll be collecting this week to fight structural and institutional racism both in our society and in our church, working to lead us forward to overcome the barriers that we as humans have created based on something as shallow as the, skin, the tone and the color of our skin. Thank God we are not the only ones who work with the Benedict House, who support the Coffee Oasis, who have reached out to our partners at Habitat for Humanity, who open our doors to folks like Holly Ridge. Thank God we are not alone in this work, as heaven knows we couldn't do it by ourselves. The way that we can be for you for each other and for the world is because we know we are not alone. And it's not just God who is with us. It's not just the presence of the Spirit that we feel. It is not Christ embodied in one another, but Christ embodied in all of us. We accomplish great things because as long as we're not against each other, we can be for God. We can be for each other. We can be for the Gospel. So it is my prayer that we will find some more creative ways to explore and examine our outreach and our mission, to celebrate our outreach and our mission. I can't wait this week to find somebody whose handwriting is better than mine <laughs> to put the first message on our pantry about our food line giving. I can't wait for the next opportunity that's going to arise for us to explore this in a new way. And I can't wait to find out what ways God is using us as but a small piece of a larger vision for transforming the world for good, for showing resurrection power to conquer the death all around us and bring life and love and hope to those who need it. I can't wait. Maybe you can't either. Amen? Amen. Amen.